This is video number 20 now in our topics in quantum mechanics. In this video, we're going to discuss the time evolution of an operator. And uh, just a reminder, the playlist for all of the videos in this series is at the website, digital-university.org. Okay, in the last video, we had derived an expression for the expectation value for an observable K. We have an observable K. Its expectation value is the inner product of this of the observable K and these decide as a state vector of the system. Now when we ask what's the rate of change of the observable over time, what we really mean is what is the rate of change of its expectation value. So we want to try to derive an expression for this. This here again, this is the rate of change of the expected value of the observable. Now, in this quantity, K, the observable itself, that doesn't change. What changes over time are the components of state vector. So, when we're considering our derivative here, then we just simply treat this like a product. So, this would be equal to We have a broad vector, psi, the observable, k, and then we have psi dot, derivative, plus the broad vector, psi dot, its rate of change, its derivative, k, head vector, psi. Now, what is this equal to? Well, now this harkens back into the Schrodinger's equation. We haven't derived that yet, but Schrodinger's equation is this. Psi dot is equal to minus i over h bar, and we have the Hamiltonian operating on the state vector psi. So here, this is its complex conjugate, so over here again, this is plus ih, and then we have the broad vector psi with h to the right of it. And how operators operate on a broad vector, that we have covered in one of the previous videos. What we haven't covered yet is what is the Hamiltonian? And in quantum mechanics, just like in classical mechanics, it's can be considered the total energy of the system. And quantum mechanics it usually has this expression, e squared over 2m plus u of x. So this is the potential, and we're saying u of x, that the potential depends on position, and right now only the position x, because we're only considering quantum mechanical particles at this point in one dimension, moving anywhere along the x-axis. Now here, if we think of this classically, where the momentum is mass times velocity, then this squared divided by 2m would be one half mv squared, which would be kinetic energy. So then the Hamiltonian in quantum mechanics does correspond to the total energy of the system. But so let's see now what these expressions do. And we put them into these expressions up here. So, what we're going to have then is, this is equal to, and we have raw vector psi, we have k, and then for psi dot, we have h, heck vector psi.
and you have minus i h bar. So this is from this expression. Now from over here we have plus i over h bar, and then for the bra vector, its derivative is i over h bar bra vector with the Hamiltonian on the right side of it. So this is now this, and now for the rest of the expression. Okay, now this, the expected value of the observable k, a lot of times you see it written like this, just simply. Well, that's an abbreviation for the expected value of k. So, what we have is the rate of change of our expected value equals this expression. Well, here we have hk minus kh, and we have psi on each side. So, we could simply write this as, this would be equal to i over h bar psi, and then here, where we have hk minus kh, that's the same thing as the commutator, hk. Remember what we discussed in the previous video when we were discussing uh, the momentum position commutator that this is equal to HK minus KH. Or many times you see the expression just written like this. that it is equal to i of h, and it's just simply this. You know, you can put the size in it, but just do the expression like this. So what we're trying to say here, then, is that the rate of change of the expected value of the observable k is dependent upon the Hamiltonian of the system. But what you see written in the books is that the Hamiltonian is the generator for the change of the observable k. Now exactly what does this mean? Right now it's kind of in abstract terms. What we'll do in the next video is we're going to consider the time evolution of position, and then in the video after that, the time evolution of momentum, and see exactly what kind of expressions they give us, and we'll use this formula. So, come back, join us for those videos, and we'll wrap up our discussions here again, considering the time evolution of a quantum mechanical